are the craziest true stories you have ever heard. In today's video, I followed my crush to the basement and instantly regretted it. And after that, my dad got so rich that he replaced me with two new girlfriends. And I was so sad that I couldn't feel any pain. And after that, my mom told me she will only love me again if I pay. So I got super duper upset and ate scorpions for breakfast. Ah! Nuggies, are you ready? Woohoo! I was running through the rain trying to get home as quickly as possible when I noticed my crush James walking onto the school grounds. I didn't want him to see me like this. I was soaked to the bone, looking like a drowned rat. And so is he, girl. You both got caught in the rain. Ain't no big deal. But I had to know what he was up to. What if he was breaking into the school? I decided to follow him. And at one point, I swear, he turned around and looked right at me. I didn't know if I was seeing things, but it even looked like he smiled at me. Wait, did he want me to follow him? Suddenly, I felt brave. I was going to tell him how I felt. The moment I'd waited for my whole life had arrived. But then I saw him climbing into the tornado shelter, and that should have been my first warning not to keep following him. Because things were about to get super weird. You think things are about to get weird? No. He's just opening up the top secret dungeon door and hopping right in there. I think you should go after him. Ain't nothing sketchy about that. Okay, so there I was climbing into a tornado shelter after my crush with absolutely no plan of what I'd do next. I was acting purely on impulse and it felt amazing. I felt sure he knew I'd climbed in after him, but I couldn't see anything. So I used the flashlight on my phone and realized he'd already gone down the stairs. The rain was really pouring now, so I closed the lid. The last thing I wanted was to flood the shelter. Not on a special night like tonight. Any other night you want to flood it, go ahead. I'll drown, no problem. But tonight? <laughs> Tonight's a special one. Like, what? I'd never been this close to James before, just the two of us alone. Except we weren't alone. As soon as I closed the lid, I heard a girl's voice. No, I started panicking and decided this had been a stupid idea. I pushed the lid to climb back out, but it wouldn't open. No matter how oh. hard I pushed it, it didn't budge. Oh my gosh, I was stuck. If it had just been me and James down there, it would have been quite exciting. But suddenly I heard a kissing sound <gasps> and I realized my worst nightmare had just come true. I was stuck in a tornado shelter with my crush and his girlfriend by the sounds of things. I didn't want them to know I was there, like some creepy stalkers. So I tried to keep as quiet as possible. I could hear them laughing. And then the girl said, did anyone see you come in here? I hope we didn't get caught. And James replied, no, I don't think so. Oh no, wait, there was a girl from my school, but she wouldn't say anything. She's such a loser. Oh no, girl. You might have thought all these years you were crushing on him in secret, but uh, hate to break it to you, but he know. And not only does he know, he thinks you're weird and creepy. At that, I had to cover my face. I wanted to cry. It felt like he'd shoved a knife through my heart. And then I felt angry. I had to get out of there. This was literally the most embarrassing situation to ever be in. And what would my parents think when they found out? Oh. <gasps> I'm sorry, does anyone else find it kind of funny that the dad is like a crazy redhead and so is the girl? <laughs> I mean, I get it's common if the dad's a redhead that she's gonna be a redhead, but I don't know, I just wasn't expecting that. With one final push, but I pushed too hard. The next moment, I lost my footing and was rolling down the stairs. I landed <gasps> with a thump and blacked She's out. She's rolling downstairs like Kirby does. James and his girlfriend were standing over me. No, they didn't even busted. I was okay. James just looked down at me and said, did you follow me here? What are you playing at? Then he turned to his girlfriend and said, come on, babe, let's bounce. Then they just left me lying there and headed up the stairs. I was about oh. to tell them that we were trapped down there, but they'd soon discover it for themselves. I could hear James bashing on the lid of the shelter, but obviously it wouldn't open. And then he shouted down to me and asked if I'd done this and if I thought it was funny. 
No, James, I did not find this funny. I wanted oh, to that's face. Him. Gosh, what would he say if he knew how much I wished I were his girlfriend and not that dumb blonde girl? Girl, he just completely disrespected you, yelled at you, told you you're weird and creepy, and you still want to be his girlfriend? And he started shouting about how he had to get out ASAP because the next day was his big football game that was going to guarantee him a scholarship to a top college. <gasps> he said he had to get it, otherwise he'd be stuck in this stupid town forever. Oh, no. This was a disaster, and it was only just the beginning. See, the boy tries to ruin her day by being rude to her, but little did he know that she was hitting him right back by ruining his life. Bye-bye, football scholarship. See you never. I sat up and looked around with my flashlight on my phone and realized there was literally nothing down there except for some sandbags and an old scratchy blanket that looked like oh, a that's creepy. might be living in it. Uh, and then I realized I was shivering, like properly freezing cold. My phone was on 10%. Not that it mattered. There was absolutely no signal down there anyway. I didn't even have a bottle of water on me. And by the looks of things, James and his girlfriend had nothing either. Oh, man. I held my breath as they came down the stairs. I was so scared of what they'd say to me. They were arguing and James's girlfriend came right up to me and said, this is all your fault. You've ruined Ooh. everything. Truly, that felt like the most awkward moment of my entire life. James told her to try and calm down and I learned her name was Amy. She must have gone to another school because I'd never seen her before. Okay, Angles. I mean, I get it's a cartoon, but I don't know if I want to be looking at that. Neither of them had signal either and soon they started screaming for help. I didn't want to tell them it was pointless. The rain was so loud. No one would hear us even if they were right above us. Eventually, I told them I was sorry, even though it wasn't my fault. I lied mm -hmm. and told them I'd been trying to shelter from the rain because I'd forgotten my umbrella, but Amy didn't buy it. She said, yeah, right. You're clearly a stalker. Do you get kicks out of watching other people making out or something? James said you're a loser and he wasn't Who joking. That? Look at you. If I hadn't already been underground, I'd have asked the ground to swallow me up. No one had Aww. ever been so mean to me before. After that, it was really uncomfortable and all of us were in a bad mood. I mean, because I would have assumed that you would all be in a cheery, happy-go-lucky mood when you're stuck in a dungeon with no food, water, or signs of any kind of help. You're in a dungeon, not Disney World. And it became obvious we'd all have to spend the night down there. So I found a Awkward. Way away from Amy as possible and lay down. I was still shivering and thought about using the insect infested blanket, but Amy had already grabbed it. There was no way I'd fall asleep. I was so oh, thirsty. Oh, she and crying. The shelter luckily had a small toilet. There was no sink, which meant no running water. I'd have drunk the rain earlier if I knew this was going to happen. I covered my ears because I was afraid I'd hear them kissing. And eventually I must have fallen asleep because the next moment I found myself waking up to hearing a rustling sound. Oh, that rustling sound ain't Amy and her boyfriend. It's probably the sound of a bunch of creepy crawly cockroaches. I looked over at Amy and even though I couldn't see anything, I knew she was eating something. Ooh. I could hear her. I couldn't believe she had food with her and wasn't sharing it. Oh, I can! This girl ain't nice! She a diva! Divas don't share! James no? I should have said something, but I was too scared. I'd already caused enough trouble. Finally, morning came and by then my phone was at 2%. Hey, hold up, hold up, hold up. Is this girl screensaver really of her crush, James? Ooh, okay, that is a little stalkerish. Soon, I wouldn't even know what time it was. I was bursting for the toilet, so I went to use it. And of course, Amy shouted at me and said my peeing was too loud and had woken her up. Then I noticed there was a light switch outside the toilet. I clicked on it, not expecting it to work. And suddenly the whole shelter was flooded with light. And all you see on the ground is hundreds of thousands of spiders and ants and grasshoppers and cockroaches. It ain't pretty. Quickly pulled the blanket up and told me to look away. Oh my gosh, were they not wearing clothes? Then Amy just <gasps> laughed and said, everyone knows that body heat is the best way to survive in cold weather. Ew. <laughs> Once they got dressed, 
I realized how pretty Amy was, and it really annoyed me. How could I have thought James would ever be interested in someone like me when he had Amy? I ran up the stairs and tried to push the lid again, but then I just sat there waiting for people to arrive at school. Then I'd scream my head off. Plus, I didn't want them to look at me. I felt so insecure about my running clothes, and I hadn't even shaved my legs. I didn't want Aww. James noticing. I hate to break it to you, but James ain't interested in you. He's a little more worried about the uh, girl with no clothes on under his sheet. Ah! I could hear the school bell and feet walking over us, but no one heard me scream. How long would we be down here? James was complaining about being hungry and Amy too, but I knew Amy had eaten something in the night. She was a liar. We started Make. to place to see if we could find anything, and James suddenly sounded happy. Under the sandbags, he'd found some old bottles of water. The water looked disgusting, but I had drunk anything by that point. Both James and I downed like a liter each, but Amy refused. Suit yourself, I thought. Then about an hour later, I started getting a weird pain in my stomach. Oh no. There was no toilet paper. This couldn't be happening. I had to run and almost puked my guts up. And I wasn't the only one. James raced in after me and at one point, we were both lying on the floor taking it in turns to vomit. Not exactly oh, what no. I had in mind for our first date together. That was This girl's still imagining her dates with this boy after he's rejected her about 500 times. Girl, just let it go. It ain't gonna happen. That water must have been 20 years old or something. Amy got seriously annoyed and even tried to drag James out of the bathroom. Was she jealous? And huh? then I noticed an empty this girl soda has bottle no heart. behind the toilet. Had Amy secretly had a bottle of soda and not told us? How <gasps> selfish. That first day seemed to fly by. Most of it spent in the bathroom, of course. By the end of the day, I'd almost lost my voice from screaming for help. Would we be stuck down there forever? And then <gasps> nighttime came, and James and Amy got into a huge fight. Secretly, it made me happy to see them argue. James deserved oh. better. He was super upset that he'd missed his football game. But Amy just kept saying he could go to college with her and then they'd never be apart. And James got really angry and said he didn't want to go to her college. Man, this girl legit does not care about anybody but herself. And the whole room went silent. It was tense. I didn't know what to do, so I just stayed quiet and pretended to be asleep. A while later, I heard someone mm. saying my name. I opened my eyes and could see James. He said he could hear my teeth chattering and that I should come and share their blanket. But if Amy woke up and saw me, she'd go mental. <gasps> I didn't care about her, though. James was actually being kind of nice to me for the first time in my life. I it's couldn't a lose my chance. So I Don't do it as a trap. Next to him, our legs were almost touching. And of course, that woke Amy <gasps> up. And when she saw me, I thought she was going to explode. James oh. wanted to keep the peace, so he snuggled into her and left me lying there all alone. That's so awkward. During the night, I decided to try and get closer to him. I rolled over until I was almost right at his back. <laughs> but then I heard something. They were kissing. I was ah! watching, wishing it was me he was kissing. I couldn't oh. stop staring, but suddenly Amy opened her eyes and caught me watching them. She told oh, James, no, no, but James no. that I was asleep and that they should get some sleep too. But James didn't go back to sleep. He waited until Amy was snoring next to him, and then he reached out his hand and grabbed mine. Shut the front door! Wait, what? This girl actually does have a chance with James? Well, that's a surprise to me. This story just did a complete 360. I felt like my heart was going to explode. And I so badly <gasps> wanted to get closer to him. But it was too risky. There was always the next night, right? So we fell asleep holding hands and I couldn't stop smiling. Oh gosh, I'm nervous. I was lying there all alone. When Amy got up to go to the bathroom, I smiled at James and he smiled back. But then Amy came out and saw me and said, Freak, stop staring at us like that. Ooh. I thought James would stick up for me, but he didn't. He was acting like nothing had happened between <laughs> us. 
The rest of that day was kind of weird. We just sat around quietly. At one point, James almost fainted. I mean, we were all starving. I was so weak. I just kept napping. And when I woke up from one of my naps, James and Amy were eating biscuits. Where did they <gasps> get them from? I could almost feel the saliva Snakes. pulling out of my mouth. And I assumed Amy would offer me one, but she didn't. They ate them all. And after I'm that, not surprised. I to either of them. I was so mad. I couldn't mm -hmm. sleep that night because my stomach was rumbling so loudly. But once Amy had fallen asleep, James reached into his pocket and handed me a biscuit. I swear oh. I almost kissed him right there and then. Wait, but where'd they find those biscuits? That's my question. I mean, finding a way to get out? Pfft. Who cares at this point? I just want a cookie. This was why I had a crush on him. Because he gives you cookies? Good guy, even if he had a demon for a girlfriend. For the next oh. few nights, we got into a bit of a routine. After Amy fell asleep, we'd lie there and hold hands. And one night, James came right up to me and I could tell he was about to kiss me. <gasps> but Amy started murmuring what in her sleep. What is this love triangle? And he moved over to her and held her. It drove me crazy. After we'd been down there for like six days, things were really starting to smell. The toilet, my clothes, it was nasty. And still, James and I hadn't shared a kiss. Girl, why do you want to be the second woman in this three-way love triangle situation? We all know the side chick is the one getting used. Well, I guess both girls get used, but you know what I mean. You're getting more used than the other girl because at least he's public with the other one. You do some dirty little secret that he doesn't want to tell nobody about. But for some reason, Amy still looked good. That day I noticed she didn't get up. It was like she'd given up on shouting for help, but it bothered me. Why should she get to sit there and chill? So I told her I'd just seen a huge spider and I've never seen her run so fast. She raced up the stairs to where James was and I immediately went over to where she'd been sitting. I just had this feeling she was hiding something, like another pack More cookies. of biscuits. But mm -hmm. I found something much bigger. Under where she'd been sitting was a loose part of the floorboard. I lifted it up and couldn't believe what I was seeing. There was so much stuff down there, <gasps> beauty products, food, a battery pack, even clothes. What? Oh my gosh, what? was going on? I I'm didn't so have time confused. to put the floorboard back before James appeared to find the spider. I whispered that Amy had been hiding stuff. James came running over and pulled out her phone. He knew her oh, password no. and typed it in quickly. Then he saw some messages that said things like, I need to find a way to stop him going off to college. I'm scared <gasps> he'll leave me. As he was reading them and I was eating one of her secret chocolate bars, she <gasps> came down the stairs. I told you, this girl is evil. She don't even care that he's not gonna get accepted into his dream football college anymore. All she cares about is him staying with her no matter what. What are you doing? She screamed, but it was too late. We'd caught her red-handed. She tried to grab her phone back from James, but he wouldn't give it to her. Eventually, she broke down and said that she didn't want James to leave her for college. So she planned this, but she had only meant for them to be stuck down there for one or two days. Then she said I'd ruined it all by turning up and getting them locked in here. But there was something else. While she'd been talking, I'd been digging around and inside a pair of her socks was a key. I held uh. it in my hands and watched as James went crazy at Amy. He said he couldn't believe he dated such a psycho and that she'd officially ruined his life. Then the uh, best part no. of all, he turned to me and apologized. He said he was sorry he'd treated me so badly, but actually he'd realized how amazing I was and had enjoyed oh, our man. sneaky hand-holding sessions while Amy slept. At that, Amy went berserk. She <gasps> ran towards me and I quickly jumped away. Then I watched as she dug around inside her secret hiding place. Looking for this, I asked swinging the key in my hand. Then I turned oh, to James man. and said, she's been hiding this key the whole time. All right, lady, go off and snitch. I mean, fine, if you're gonna snitch on someone, it might as well be on this devil girl, Amy. We don't like her, not one bit. Before Amy could get to it, I ran up the stairs and undid the lock. James was right behind me and we both climbed out and collapsed onto the ground laughing. We were free. As Amy climbed out, I thought she was going to kick me or something, but she just stormed off. 
and James shouted after her. That's right, keep walking. I never want to see your face again. Finally, she was gone, and James turned to me and gave me the biggest kiss ever. We could see the janitor running towards us, and before all hell broke loose with our parents about where we'd been for the past week, James asked for my number, and now we're about to go on our first proper date. The worst <gasps> week of my life just became the best week. Oh my gosh! Guys, to be honest, I don't know how I feel about this ending. I mean, I'm happy for the girl that she ended up with a guy and Devil McCrazy Blonde Girl is out of the picture. But at the same time, if he was kind of cheating on his girlfriend with you when he was with her, I don't know if I'm just a skeptic, but he might do it again to you with someone else. I don't know, I don't know. I might be wrong, I might be wrong. Okay, I'm happy for them, I'm happy for them. But nonetheless, a crazy story. They would go into her bedroom and shut the door so I couldn't come into play. One time, Luis was playing tea party with her friends. She had plates with cookies and glasses of lemonade. I wanted to play too. I pushed the door open so hard that I tumbled into the room and fell on top of the plates and glasses. <laughs> Luis started shouting and crying. Mom came running upstairs. Oh, what have you done, Joe? She asked. But mommy, I just wanted to play tea party with my sister. Why can't I drink those special juices and the mini little cakes and cookies? Why, Mom, why? He's ruining everything, Mom, cried Louise. With that, Mom picked me up and took me downstairs to sit in the room with her. It wasn't fair. I told Mom I was only an accident, but she didn't believe me. Sometimes, Mom would ask Louise to play with me while she made dinner. I was so happy, but Louise didn't speak to me. She just put the TV on and ignored me. Louise had lots of friends because she went to a big school with a lot of students. I couldn't wait to start school. Then I would get lots of friends too. Finally, the day came. My first day at school, I woke up early and ate my breakfast. Mom told Luis and I to get into the car while she locked up the house. As we waited for Mom, I smiled excitedly at Luis. What I don't understand is why this dude likes his sister so much when all she is is rude to him. This girl might as well eat chips for breakfast, lunch, and dinner because she's salty. And not the good kind. Don't think you're going to hang around with me and my friends, said Luis. Mm. Mom got into the car and we drove to school. When we arrived at the school gates, Mom said to Luis, make sure you look after Joe. She's like, oh yeah, Mom. Don't worry. I'll take care of Joe real good. Okay, Luis, we get it. You don't like your brother. Now, would you just quit it? Your evil spirits are uh, getting pretty old. Yes, Mom, replied Luis, smiling at Mom. But as soon as we went... Yes, Mom, replied Luis, smiling. Don't think you're going to hang around with me and my friends, said Luis. <sighs> Mom got into the car and we drove to school. When we arrived at the school gates, Mom said to Luis, make sure you look after Joe. Yes, Mom, replied Luis, smiling at Mom. But as soon as we went around the corner, Luis ran off to her friends and left me all on my own. I felt scared and I didn't know where I was supposed to go. Why was Luis so mean to me? I couldn't help being a boy. <laughs> at lunchtime, I went to see if I could find Luis. She was sitting with a group of her friends in the corner. They were laughing and looked to be having so much fun. As I went towards them, Luis pointed and said, that's my little brother. He's such a baby. Her friends all started laughing at me. I felt the tears welling up in my eyes. From that day on, I made sure I stayed away from Luis and her friends at school. It took you this long to find out? I mean, I'm happy for you, but dude, catch up. Because up until this day, you've been pretty slow. By the time we were both in high school, Luis and I didn't really speak to each other at all. She spent all her time in her bedroom. I didn't know what she did there, but she was very secretive. One time, I walked into her room and she was writing in a book. As I came in the room, she hid the book under her pillow. What do you want? She shouted meanly. Get out of my room. I couldn't stop thinking about that book. I wondered what it was she didn't want me to see. One Saturday morning, I had my chance. Luis had been invited to sleep over at her friend's house the night before. Mom had gone shopping, and Dad was outside doing some gardening. I slipped Aww. into Luis's room and started looking around for the book. I couldn't see it anywhere. Then I remembered. She had hidden it under her pillow. 
I ran over to her bed and lifted her pillow. Uh. There it was. Dude, don't open it. Don't open it. I'm telling you for your own good, do not open it. You about to find some things that you wish you never read. Some of her deepest, darkest secrets that you're never going to be able to look at her the same again after. Girls put everything in their diaries. Everything. I opened the pages and started reading. It was her secret diary. Duh. It was pretty boring. Of course, she complained about me a lot in it. But then I hit the jackpot. I turned the page and read the words. I think I'm in love with Jake Brown. <gasps> I started laughing to myself. Boy, she was going to regret being mean to me at school. I couldn't wait to go to school on Monday and tell everyone what I'd read. Monday morning came, and Luis was being her usual mean self on the way to school. She was telling me how boring I was and how she was so cool. I didn't really care. I smiled to myself as I walked into school. As soon as I got in, I started telling everyone that Luis was in love with Jake Brown. <gasps> it wasn't long before the whole school was talking about it. Everyone started teasing Luis. When we got home from school, Luis ran straight to her room and slammed the door shut. I heard her crying, but I didn't really care. <gasps> After all, she had done lots of mean things to me. And anyway, she had no idea it was me that had told everyone. It was about two weeks later when I came home from school to find Luis on her computer with her bedroom door open. As I walked past, she smiled at me and called out, Hey, Joe, come in here. I was surprised, but I went into her room. Have you heard the news about this new virus going around? She asked. No, what is it? I replied. She started to tell me all about this strange new virus. It gets inside your body and starts eating you from the inside out. Guys, I don't like the sound of this. I don't like the sound of this at all. This is some weird brother and sister witchcraft demonic spirit kind of revenge thing going on between the two of them that I don't want to be a part of. Sister is mean to the brother. The brother exposes the sister and now the sister turned into a witch apparently it gets inside your body and starts eating you from the inside out she told me it sounded terrifying i hope i don't catch that virus i thought to myself i didn't want something eating away at me i was a growing boy or that's what my mom was always telling me i had always had a good appetite but recently i was eating a lot more because maybe you're eating now for two but i'm just saying that night we sat down for dinner it was mom's homemade spaghetti. I loved it. I piled a huge pile of spaghetti onto my plate and started munching away while watching TV. I looked down at my plate. That's strange, I thought. I've eaten that huge plate of spaghetti, but I still feel hungry. The same thing happened the next night, and then the next. I was eating so much food, but I never felt full. Then my heart sank. I suddenly realized why I was so hungry. I must have caught the virus. Mm. What was I going to do? But then surely there could be another explanation. He's pregnant. Oh, wait, no. False alarm. Of course, I was a teenage boy. Everyone knew that teenage boys were always hungry. <laughs> I laughed to myself. I was fine. The next morning in class, I was daydreaming about the huge burger I was going to have for my lunch. Yeah, those McDonald's golden arches, they get to the best of us. My best mate, Mike, whispered to me. Have you seen the new girl? No, I replied. I'll introduce you at lunchtime, he said. The lunch bell rang and we raced down to the school cafeteria. We bought our burgers and looked around for a table. Over there, said Mike, pointing at a table where two girls were sitting. We walked over to the table and the girls looked at us. <laughs> this is Julie, said Mike. She's the Ooh. I looked at Julie and was about to say something when I felt it. The blood drained from my face and my heart skipped a beat. I had felt something moving inside me. Uh-oh. It was true. Buddy, I don't think there's no virus moving inside of you. I think that's just the lunch lady's deli meats. That'll go right through you. I had caught the virus. I left my burger and ran from the table. I was panicking. I couldn't eat my dinner that night either. All I could think about was this virus inside oh, of me. No. I told mom I was really tired and wanted an early night. I went up to my room and lay on my bed. It wasn't long before I had drifted off to sleep. Suddenly, I woke up. 
It was the middle of the night and I could hear a strange noise. Ugh. It had woken me, but what was it? That's when I realized the sound was coming from inside me. It was as though I could hear something eating away inside of me. I couldn't get back to sleep. I just lay in bed listening to the strange sound. That's when I knew I had to do something about it. The next morning, I told Luis all my fears. I told her everything that had happened to me and she agreed. It definitely seemed like I had all the symptoms of the virus. I would have to go to the doctor. Oh, you don't need to go to the doctor, said Luis. I have a portable x-ray machine. We can see inside your stomach. Excuse me, Louise? Ain't it such a coincidence you had the portable x-ray machine just handy dandy inside of your house? Man, who even owns that? Seems suspicious to me. Louise went and got her machine. I thought it was strange that Louise would have an x-ray machine, but mm -hmm. I was desperate to see what it would show, so I ignored the concern. She pointed it at my stomach and my face fell. Oh. There. Day, you could see this strange object moving inside my stomach. Oh my gosh. It, I thought, my life is over. I told mom that I wanted to go see the doctor. I told her that I had caught a virus and something was eating away at me from inside. At first, she thought I was joking, but once she saw that I was serious about it, she said she would make an appointment for me. We went to the doctor's office. I told him all about my symptoms. Okay, let's take a look at you, the doctor said. The doctor listened with his stethoscope to my stomach. He couldn't hear anything unusual, but I convinced him that he should take an x-ray. After the x-ray, we sat in the doctor's surgery. The doctor looked at my mom. I think Joe may be suffering from stress. <laughs> Dang, that's a slap in the face. But he's over here thinking he's about to... From this VIR US? And the doc is looking at the x-ray like, meh. I think you're just a little stressed. No biggie. That dude be thinking he's going crazy. Cause maybe he is. I think Joe may be suffering from stress, he said. The x-ray's all clear. There's nothing wrong with Joe. Mom looked relieved, but I knew mm -hmm. the doctors had missed something. I knew I couldn't just accept this fate. I needed to do something about it. I started researching how to kill something inside you. I didn't actually find any information on this virus, but I knew that my only chance would be to poison it. I didn't what? tell anyone, but I decided I was going to make my own poison. I started collecting all the things that I would need to make my poison. <gasps> the day came when I decided I could take it no longer. I was in my room plucking up the courage to swallow the poison. Guys, disclaimer, disclaimer, never ever drink what he's about to drink. That is not the way to kill nothing inside of you and will not make you better. He's just gonna end up himself, you know? I was in my room plucking up the courage to swallow the poison when Luis came up the stairs. She barely glanced at me, but I wanted to tell her what I was about to do. I'm going to kill the virus by drinking this poison, I told Luis. I picked up the glass of poison and put it to my lips. I was about to swallow it when Luis shouted, No, Joe, don't drink it. You haven't got a virus. It was me all along. <gasps> what? I Luis questioningly, and that's when she told me the truth. It was me that ate all your food, she said. Luis went on to explain that the reason I was still hungry was because she had been sneaking the food from my plate when I wasn't looking. She had found out that it was me that told the whole school she loved Jake Brown. She wanted to get a revenge. But I felt it moving inside me when I saw the new girl, I said. Louis smiled. That's just butterflies, she said. Everyone gets those when you see someone you like. Mm. And I heard it in the middle of the night, I went on. I put a sound machine under your mattress, Louis explained. I'm sorry I've been so mean to you. I was so shocked by this sudden turn of events, but I had to admit, it was also wrong of me to tell her crush that she liked him. I'm sorry I told everyone your secret, I replied. Louis smiled. It's okay. I think we're even now, don't you? I nodded, and we hugged. After that, we got along just fine. She thinks they're even now? You call exposing someone's crush versus almost drinking something that would... You is even? Uh, sis, I don't think you know the definition of even, cause that's not even close. My dad had always been a ladies' man.
You know, the kind of person who- Whoa, 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 hold up! Why is her daddy so big like the size of the Hulk there? And then looking like a scrawny little spaghetti noodle there? Make it make sense! You know, the kind of person who flirts with a supermarket cashier and wears a gold watch and chain? I don't know what my mom saw in him. Okay, Shane! She was kind and caring. After I was born, she gave up her career as a nurse to stay home with me. She was kind and caring and a really good person. But my daddy, you mean that sleazeball? He was a player and not that good. She made a lot of sacrifices for us. Unlike my mom, dad was selfish. He spent most of his wages on himself. And sometimes it was hard for mom to pay all the bills with what was left. She wouldn't speak up about it though. She was too afraid of arguing with my dad. He's very intimidating. But the worst thing was that he was openly cheating on her. We all knew it. Sometimes he didn't come home until really late, if at all. Oh, no, 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 daddy, that is the last straw. Why you be cheating on my mama like that? They say happy wife, happy life. Not happy secret girlfriend, happy life. You got it twisted. And my mom often cried because of it. I remember when I was nine. I got so sick of him, I screamed, you need to treat mom with respect. But he just shrugged and said, she gets what she deserves. Every day I work hard to put food on the table. You better be grateful or move out and find your own job. Mom didn't say anything. That's how our family was. No one dared to speak out against my dad. We were all scared of him. Man, that sounds like one toxic relationship. Mama, if it's the money you're worried about before leaving him, I'm sure you can find some sugar daddy in Mexico or something. he probably treat you better and give you a life of luxury. But uh, you didn't hear that advice from me. I wanted mom to leave, but she didn't. So part of me blames her for what happened next. No, no, no. That's what we call a toxic cycle. You want to leave, you might try to leave, but you don't leave. Because the other person made you feel so bad and tries to manipulate you into thinking that you'll be way worse off if you do leave. My dad's uncle died and left him a lot of money. A decent man would use it to build a better life for his family, right? Not my dad. He didn't even tell us about the money. Instead, he told mom he was leaving her and walked out with just a small bag of things. I guess he figured he didn't need his stuff because he could buy everything new. Mom was absolutely devastated. I never heard anyone cry so hard. I ran over and hugged her, saying, Don't worry, mom. You still have me. But after they split up, she became very depressed. Girl, why are we so sad? Isn't this what we wanted the whole time? I mean, sure, you're gonna miss the times you had together, but now's the time to party. The bad guy's gone, bye-bye. So grab your girlfriends, go to a restaurant, and start sipping on some apple juices, if you know what I mean. She had to find a new job, but it had been too long since she'd left nursing, so she became a cashier. She couldn't afford to pay the rent on our home, so mom uh, and I moved into a studio apartment and slept oh on no. mattresses on the floor. <gasps> we lived like this for over a year, and I felt so bad for my mom. Dad didn't even try to get in touch with us. I was 13 when I was at the mall and saw my dad again. He was with a girl who was maybe 20 or something. Ugh. He was disgusted. Had dad divorced mom to date this girl? I followed them back to their car. But it wasn't just any car, but a brand new BMW X5. How did dad get the money for it? I knew I had to find out where he was living and went to the police. I told them I didn't know where my father was and the next day they gave me his address. Oh girl, you sneaky, but I like it. I wanted to confront him and went over to his house. But when I got there, I was too scared to ring the bell. Girl, you better hit that as hard as you can. Hit that bell so many times that it's like you're playing the bongo. Go and confront your daddy and show him who is the real boss. Instead, I snuck in the backyard and climbed up a tree where I could see directly into their living room. At first, nothing happened. I started to get bored. But just as I was about to go, I saw something shocking. What? My dad came what? into the room with two girls. <gasps> One was the girl I'd seen the other day, and the other looked so similar they could have been sisters. And can we also talk about how they both look so similar to you, his daughter? 
Ugh. The fact that he's dating two girls that look like his own daughter is disturbing. Daddy, I know you just got two million dollars, but that don't mean you gotta find a girl two million times younger than you, cause that's gross. They were both in their 20s, while my dad was in his early 50s. I won't go into detail about what I Ugh. saw, but one woman was wearing a bunny costume while the other was wearing a schoolgirl uniform. Oh it man. Was gross. At home, I wasn't sure if I should tell my mom, but I decided she had the right to know. <gasps> I told her about Dad's new house, but not the two women with him. I didn't want to hurt her feelings more than necessary. Mom said she didn't mind, but I said, Maybe Dad got all his money before you divorced. If that's the case, you deserve half of it. My mom wasn't sure, but I kept pressuring her until she finally hired a lawyer to find out what was going on. It took a few months for the lawyer to get access to my dad's bank transactions. But when he did, we discovered my dad had inherited that money a week before he told mom he <gasps> wanted a divorce. No way! I hated him more than ever. You might hate him, but soon your wallet won't. Cause you was about to get paid. The courts found out his uncle had left my dad two million dollars and awarded half of it to my mom. <gasps> yes! However, dad had already spent over a quarter of his inheritance. So after he paid my mom, he complained he only had 400000 left. Oh, yeah. Don't you just hate it when that happens? Just having $400,000 left? Oh, what a shame. How will I live? How will I eat? How will my dog eat? A very comfortably, actually. Because 400000 is a lot of money, bro. Somebody got too used to being rich, rich. But my dad's shameless. Can you believe he actually came to my mom and asked her for forgiveness, mm. said he wanted to try again. But this time, even mom had had enough, and she told him to go away. Life's Period. Great now. We don't have to worry about money anymore, and my mom even started online dating to find a new boyfriend. She told me about a couple of her dates, and it sounded like they were much nicer guys than my dad. I mean, I don't think it takes much. I'm so proud of my mom for finally having the courage to stand up to him. Oh, family, will you look at that? As soon as the mom finally stuck to her ground and got away from that loser, her life became so much better. Peace out, Girl Scout. See you never. Hi, I'm Ryan, and I have a rare disorder. I don't feel pain. I didn't always know this, though. Here's how it all started. My parents thought I was the most perfect baby in the world. Why? I rarely ever cried. I was laughing most of the time and only broke into tears when I was hungry or needed my diaper changed. Relatable! My parents' friends, who also had babies, were so envious that my parents were able to get a full eight hours of sleep each night. One funny story that my dad tells everyone over dinner is that when I was a toddler, I was playing in the dirt outside. He heard me laughing uncontrollably, so he came to see what could have been so amusing about a pile of dirt. When he looked at me, he gasped. I had a huge scorpion in my hand, and I was just playing with it like it was a teddy bear. He also says I had a huge red mark on my leg where it had stung me. He screamed at me to drop it, then picked me up and ran into the house. I was still laughing, apparently. My parents took me to the doctor to check if I was okay, and I was. However, no one could understand why I wasn't screaming in pain. Probably because your son is a sicko who likes to play with highly dangerous bugs. I mean, if he likes baby scorpions at that age, can you imagine what he's gonna go for when he's a little bit older? Crocodiles? Snakes? Maybe even piranhas? I had two older brothers who were always pushing each other around, and when I was big enough to play their wrestling and boxing games, they included me too. They were always hitting or punching me, and instead of crying, I just hit and punched back harder. They'd often stop the games because they were in so much pain. I found it all amusing because I felt nothing. Yeah, I found it all amusing because my brothers were like all bloody, crying, you know, off to the hospital. And me? I was just in my room, perfectly fine, waiting to play my next game of Xbox. My brothers going to the hospital is so funny. Not? When I was about six, my family and I were on the beach, and my mom got a sea urchin stuck in her foot. Ooh. She screamed and shouted in pain. Then she burst into tears. My father tried to pull it out, but the more he tried, the more it hurt. I really couldn't understand why it affected my mother so much, so 
I went into the sea and caught another sea urchin. Ah! I dropped it onto the sand and jumped on it. It tickled. Mom, this is fun. Why are you crying? Oh. I said. Oh my God, Ryan, she said. We both had urchins stuck in our feet. I was giggling and my mom was crying. He goes, Mom, this is so much fun. I love jumping on pointy things. Meanwhile, he just lifts up his foot and there's blood gushing down. Like you think Buddy just stepped on a bottle of ketchup. Homie's practically jumping on a cactus and thinks it's a freaking marshmallow or something. He's twisted. My poor dad had to deal with it all. He drove us to the hospital where they helped us to remove the spikes. For my mother, this seemed unbearable, but it didn't affect me at all. And I guess that is when I realized I was a bit different. I decided to use this difference to my advantage. At school, I developed the nickname Fearless because I was always doing the most outrageous stunts. I'd climb to the top of the monkey bars and deliberately throw myself down. Or I'd swing really high, then just jump off midair. One day, I brought a lighter to school and tried to impress a girl by burning my finger. It was so much fun. Oh yeah, it was so much fun. I took a lighter to my finger, started burning my finger so much that my whole finger fell off. But it's okay guys, don't worry. I might have one last finger, but at least I didn't feel it when it fell off. Mission accomplished. But I have to warn you, don't try any of this at home or anywhere for that matter. I got into trouble for this because eventually the other kids wanted to attempt my stunts. When they did, they'd end up in excruciating pain with Ooh. broken limbs. It got so bad that my parents were called into a meeting and I was expelled for being a bad influence. At my new school, I became a bully because I was angry that those stupid boys from my other school got me in trouble. I became the most feared boy at school and people would think twice before crossing my path. Mm -hmm. The bigger boys in the higher grades tried to mess with me once, but I beat them up so badly that they learned to stay away from me. <gasps> they were so shocked when I only laughed at them while they punched and kicked me. I have to admit that part of me really loved the attention and respect. I would do things just for the thrill and attention. For example, one afternoon, my parents decided they'd take us kids out to enjoy a cool stroll in the zoo. After laughing at the penguins and observing the zebras, I began to feel a bit bored. As we approached the lion's pit, I got a bright idea. Ryan, Ryan, no! My mom screamed, but it was too late. I had already jumped in. No! I walked around making funny faces at the lions while the crowd screamed for me to get out. Many people had already taken out their phones and they were recording. I ignored them because there was a cute little lion cub approaching me. Yeah, what the heck, people? All these people are so scared for him, thinking he's gonna get eaten by this scary lion. But guys, look how freaking cute that thing is. That thing wouldn't hurt nobody. Or so we think. I ran towards it and picked it up. Oh. Suddenly, I heard more shouting. So cute. Lion, look out, my dad said. Before I could even turn around, a lioness, the cub's oh. mother, I guess, oh. jumped on my back oh. and bit my arm. Oh my gosh! I turned around and pried her jaws apart with my bare arms. You pried her jaws apart with your bare arms? Buddy, I know you can't feel pain, but who said you're the world's strongest man all of a sudden? Ain't nobody said that. Before I see any more muscle on those arms, I'm gonna call your bluff. Then I laughed and hopped out of the lion's pit. I was bleeding, but I seemed Ooh. totally unbothered by the whole incident. I went viral that same afternoon. Everyone <gasps> was talking about me. Oh my gosh. In the that followed, I became so popular that I was invited by several talk show hosts to talk on their shows. It was all the attention I'd been craving, and more. As a teenager, I continued participating in extreme sports. I got tired of the bully reputation, uh. so when I moved to high school, I hung out with the tough kids who were also <laughs> into extreme sports. We called ourselves the Daredevils, and every other week we'd try a different challenge. We went mountain biking, paragliding, skydiving, and base jumping. Whoa. But my ultimate favorite was cliff diving. I loved the adrenaline rush I'd get while falling through the air and then crashing on the sea. Unlike my friends, I had absolutely no fear. One afternoon on one of our cliff diving adventures, I had an experience that influenced the rest of my life. It was just like any ordinary day, but while making silly gestures on a cliff, I ended up losing my balance. Instead of falling into the sea, 
I hit the rocks and I ended up breaking both my arm and my leg. I only knew this because this is what the x-rays at the hospital revealed. I felt completely fine. Luckily, my problem could be easily fixed, but the doctors were extremely puzzled about why I seemed to feel no pain at all. Although I could have been discharged earlier, they decided to keep me longer. Several tests were conducted, and after that, they did several more. Mm. After what seemed like weeks, they called me and my parents to a meeting. Many doctors were present, and everyone looked at me like I was some sort of alien. The head doctor looked at my parents and said, This is something we've never seen before at our hospital. Your son Ryan is incapable of feeling pain. Well, thanks for telling me that, genius. I've only known that for about, uh, let me see here. To take back the one minus the three. His whole life! I appreciate the jester, Doc, but, uh, you're a little late to the party. Your son Ryan is incapable of feeling pain, he said. What? My dad said. <laughs> what? My son? No. The one who falls off a motorcycle and is fine the next day? Are you kidding me? Come on, dad. Pick up the pace here. You should know this already. Think about the way he has behaved his whole life. I'm pretty sure there were many clear indicators. But now that we've <laughs> done the tests, we know for sure, replied the doctor. Well, there was the scorpion sting when he was a baby, and he never <laughs> cried when his brothers hit him. And he'd do all kinds of crazy stunts in elementary school. Then, the lion. My dad went blank for a while, and then it all clicked. Well, Ryan needs to be extremely careful, because he is unable to feel pain. He seems to constantly put himself in life-threatening situations. He will do things that ordinary humans would probably think twice about attempting. Think about it. He could have killed himself while jumping off that cliff, he said. Our suggestion is that he stops engaging in dangerous sports. Can you just calm down and behave like a normal young man for a while, <laughs> he said while looking at me. Can you just not be such a reckless, immature, dangerous, and mean person for once in your life? Like, settle down, kid, you know? You're getting to be a little bit too sketchy. I don't really care what any of you have to say. I said while walking out of the room and slamming the door. I was angry. How dare they all talk about me like that while I was right in the room. I loved my life and I loved the adrenaline rush I felt when I took risks. I wasn't about to put myself in a bubble just because I couldn't feel pain. Instead of persuading me to be careful, the doctor's revelation caused me to feel like I was superior to everyone else. Oh no. I decided to use my ability to make money. I started making videos while I hurt myself to see if I could get lots of views on YouTube. I did everything I could think of. I stuck needles in my hands, smashed bricks on my head, <gasps> and one time I even set myself on fire. People were horrified, but I found it hilarious. And uh, I don't think YouTube would like that either. Seems like Buddy's been getting demonetized a lot lately. I gained more and more views and more and more followers. When I finally hit 1 million, I felt the greatest sense of accomplishment I had ever felt in my life. I also continued my dangerous stunts, and when I was old enough to drive, I did every single thing I was told not to do in driving school. <gasps> I also bought a motorbike, which became my favorite thing in the universe. Oh no. I learned how to do many stunts, and of course, I did them all without a helmet. Oh. This was the worst mistake, and maybe I should have cared and listened to my mom when she begged me to wear it. Oh no, you already know that this is about to get crazy. But he's probably going to do a triple quadruple flip off of a burning building into the sea of piranhas and then get gobbled up by a crocodile. But that's just my guess. One night, while I was biking through the mountains and testing out some stunts all by myself, my lights stopped working. It didn't bother me much, but I decided I should try to head back home. Uh-oh. I went speeding through the mountains back to the town. I really enjoyed feeling the breeze through my hair. I didn't think that speeding was a bad idea because these roads were usually clear at night. Suddenly, I saw a bright white light and heard a huge oh. bang. Then, everything went black. I woke up to a masked face staring directly at me. I looked around and realized I was in an operating room. I looked at my body and realized I had many cuts all over. The surgeons were trying to stitch me back together and it looked really gross. I didn't feel anything, but just seeing myself like that really upset me. I was given a few sleeping pills and when I woke up hours later, my parents were sitting by my side. 
Oh, Ryan, my love. Oh, Ryan, my love. How could you be so freaking stupid and do all this and get yourself into an accident? Do you not listen to anything <laughs> that I say? What have you done to yourself now? My mom said while wiping the tears off her face. What do you mean, Mom? I just feel a bit drowsy, but I'm perfectly fine, I said while trying to sit up. But I couldn't move. I tried and tried again, but <gasps> nothing worked. What happened to me? I asked. <gasps> you were in a really horrible accident. You were paralyzed from the waist down, <gasps> and you might be confined to a wheelchair for the next three years, honey, my mom said. But that can't be. I didn't feel anything, I said, shocked. At that moment, the doctor walked in. Although you don't feel anything, you have badly injured yourself. <gasps> Your body needs time to heal. After two or three years, we'll get started with the physical therapy to help you walk again. <gasps> but you will never be the same. I'm sorry, he said. I sighed and thought that I should have listened to them when they asked me to be more careful. I was filled with regrets. I now have one year left to go, and I'm really hoping that I'll be able to stand soon. Although I still can't feel pain, I feel humiliated and frustrated like this. I should have made better decisions, and when I get out of this wheelchair, I will stop seeking attention, and I will try to be a lot more careful. Oh my gosh, guys! Ryan is paralyzed from the waist down! All because he didn't want to listen to his parents or the doctors by just telling him to try and be a little bit more careful! Comment down below if you feel bad for Ryan, or if you think that he should have listened to his parents in the first place. Me? I feel bad for the guy, but I have to admit, he was being pretty freaking stupid. Hi, my name is Esfir. Es what? Didn't quite catch that. My name is Esfir. I like your brains though. What are you, a psycho and popsicle? Ever since I was born, my parents have been so busy pampering my brothers, they didn't care about me at all. In fact, once I was five, they forgot to pick me up from school. Forgot to pick you up from school? How? All they gotta do is suck you up in a pokeball. You don't got those ears for nothing. Pikachu, I choose you. Pika. Mama asked her if she could courier me home. Well, like Amazon Prime? Sorry, ma'am. No one day shipping available, only three day. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. She can wait. Uh, excuse me? <laughs> Savage. But all that changed on my ninth birthday when, in five minutes, I became their favorite kid. For my ninth birthday, Mama and Baba had been planning a huge birthday party for months. It was such a big surprise that we weren't even allowed near the hall during the preps. But on the day of the party, as soon as I entered the room, I nearly passed out. From the balloons to the tables and even the walls, everything was blue and red and Spider-Man themed. Ah, uh, makes sense. You're a Pokemon fan and they're a Spidey fan. Those two don't mix. That's why they hate you. This ain't a birthday party for you. This is a whole convention to try and get you to switch to the other side. Manipulative. Mama and Baba rushed excitedly towards me singing, Happy birthday to you. Mama, I hate Spider-Man. But to my shock, Ooh. they just rushed past me and hugged my older twin brothers, Farhad and Zach, who were ten. How do our boys feel about our little surprise? Wait, what? It's not their birthday. It's mine. We know. That's why it's a surprise for them. It's their pre-birthday. <gasps> now out of the way. It's time to cut their cake. No! Her mama and dad did not just throw a surprise party for her brother and sister instead of her. Hi, her own birthday? Bro, that's too much. That's too much. Be a little mean to her. Forget her at school. But replace her on her own birthday? Oh, my heart is hurting just thinking about it. Oh, wait, that's not my heart. That's just my spidey sense is tingling. But, but what about my cake? What do you need a cake for? Our boys will grow up and make money. You're basically useless. <gasps> I'm not useless. I'm smart and pretty. Oh, maybe on a good day, but girl, I don't think today's your day. Before we talk about pretty, maybe wipe the snot from your nose first. Because boogers ain't cute. My brother patted my back. Yeah, Baba. That's really mean. You want to cut the cake, Yasfir? Just then, the door flew open and an old woman with white hair and the darkest red lipstick hobbled in. The minute Mama and Baba saw her, they literally turned to little yapping puppies. It was my Nana. 
I couldn't help rolling my eyes at my parents. Oh, Nana came in. We know they always run the show. Yeah, the parents might be younger than her, make more money than her. But if Nana says jump, you say how high. And if Nana says break a leg, you say yes, Nana. I only got two legs, but I can find you more if you need them. You want me to snap those too? They always acted weird around her because she was so rich and scary. And she loved me. She was always getting me presents and candies. Where's my granddaughter? I've got a present for her. Mama glared at me, but I ran to Nana. Nana! Happy birthday, darling. You're a real Spider-Man fan, aren't you? Zack jumped in and said, No, Nana. For Hot and I love Spider-Man. This is our pre-birthday. Nana looked shocked. Why? It's Yesvia's birthday. Yeah, but we're more important because we are boys, and she's just a girl. Just a girl? Oh, Nana ain't gonna like this one. Just a girl? Who's been feeding you this nonsense? Without another thought, Nana turned to Mama and Baba and said the craziest thing imaginable. I've decided that I'm going to give all my money to Yesvir when she turns 18. You know it's worth so much. Millions, maybe billions. I've lost count. Then she marched straight out of the house with Mama and Baba at her heels, crying and begging for forgiveness. But Nana was gone. Boom! Nana made her decision, and y'all already know she don't look back. If boys are so much better, then tell me why the only girl in the family is the one inheriting all the billions. She might only look like a cute little girl, but she just swindled her way into Nana's pockets like none of y'all boys could. Ain't it nice to be a girl? As soon as the door closed behind her, Mama and Baba turned to us. I gulped. I just knew I was in so much trouble. But to my utter shock, she came and hugged me. My eyes have been opened. If your lovely Nana thinks you're special, you must be. I love you. Behind her, Baba was on the phone with the decorators. Ew. I want you here with the Harry Potter decor in five minutes. Do you get it? Five minutes. My princess shouldn't have to wait for anyone. Were they for real? Apparently they were. And suddenly, my life turned upside down. My parents who were always ignoring me started to worship me. I was moved to my brother's room, and all their beds were shifted to the attic. My old room became my walk-in closet. My oldest brother, Omar, who was 13, tried to protest. It's not fair, Mama. We're three. She's just one and tiny. I don't see why she needs the biggest room. Mama looked like she'd found out he was pregnant. How dare you say that? From now on, you have to give her presents every day till she forgives you. And you all need to spend 15 minutes every day praising your smart and beautiful sister. Do it so when she's a billionaire, she'll give us money back. Get it? But, but Mama, they already love me and play with me. It's you and Baba who don't. Nonsense. We obviously love you. What will boys give us anyways? It's always the girls who come through. With cash. Because who needs love when you can just buy Louis Vuitton? Now give your Mama a hug. After that, whatever she said just got wackier and wackier. When I was in the third grade, some robbers broke into the house and threatened to harm me. Mama started to cry loudly. Leave her. Take one of the twins instead. We don't need two of them. <laughs> During all the commotion, I snuck away and called 911. As the police were leading the thief away, I proudly turned to the twins. I saved your life. Farhad looked at me like I was a hero. But Zach pushed me away. No, you didn't. We were in danger because of you. I hate you and we'll never play with you again. Finally, when I was in the sixth grade, I made my first ever friend in school, Brittany, and immediately invited her over. Little did I know what a dumb mistake that was going to be. As soon as Mama saw Brittany, she let out a screech and pulled me away from her. Get your filthy paws off my daughter. Look at her clothes, Yesphere. She clearly lives with the squatters. Mama, Brittany is my only friend and I like her. Well, dear, your friend over there is, uh, something we call P-O-O-R. Hey! Broke. No mula cha-cha. And with no mula cha-cha, she gonna have to cha-cha her way out too. Cause we don't play with no losers. Stop being mean. Stop being stupid. She's just your friend because she thinks she can steal your money. But I won't let this bigger child be near my mun- Girl. She turned oh. to Brittany and yelled in her face. Get out of my house right now. As Brittany ran off crying, Mama just slammed the door behind her and said, It's better not to have friends than to be friends with poor people. Baba added, I think you're right. Maybe we should homeschool you, Sphere. There's too many beggars trying to steal out her money in the world. <laughs> no! I want to go to school! But the look on Baba's face told me that wouldn't happen. Omar came to me and offered me an ice cream from the fridge. Don't be sad, Sphere. Mama and Baba just want to keep you safe. Just then, 
A shoe came flying and knocked it right out of Omar's hand. Are you out of your mind? You want to make my girl fat and ugly? Omar rolled his eyes and walked away. But I angrily grabbed the cone from the floor and started to lick it. <laughs> She's like, must. <laughs> Eat. <laughs> Ice cream. Mmm. <laughs> that one strawberry? <laughs> Just kidding, that was mint chip. Y'all are trying to poison me. I want the ice cream, Baba, and I don't care what you say. Over the next few years, I wasn't allowed out of the house or to have friends because I was too rich for anyone, even my brothers. By the time I was 15, I decided I couldn't put up with homeschooling anymore. So for my 16th birthday, when my parents asked what gift I wanted, I told them, I want to start high school. Absolutely not. I'm not a dumb kid anymore. I want to go to school. I have rights. Honey, we're just trying to protect the mu- You! Yeah, yeah. But if you stop me, I'll run away and marry the first poor man I see. Marry a poor man? Honey, no! That would mean you're actually only marrying for love and that goes against everything we believe in. Screw your head on straight! By the look on their faces, I knew I'd won. Fine, but your brothers will be with you 24-7. We can't have you getting pregnant or something. Farhad and Zach both screamed together. What? No! Baba, we're seniors. We can't look after her. It's either that or you're all homeschooled. That got Farhad and Zach to agree. But Omar just went to his room and came back with his bags. I'm already in college. I don't need to stay here and see my crazy parents drive everyone insane for money. Sorry, yes, fear, But I'm done with this family. I don't really blame them. I couldn't help thinking that at least being at school would make things easier, right? Wrong. <laughs> As I walked into my class, I heard someone whistle softly. Who's this cutie? I turned around to see the cutest boy ever smiling at Ooh. me. You wanna sit with me? <gasps> you bet you're cute, but I did. Yeah. First day of high school, and I already had the attention of a heartthrob. Hold yeah. up, girl, don't get ahead of yourself. You sure he didn't just mistake you for a popsicle? But just as I sat down, a loud announcement erupted. Yes, fear? Step away from that boy. I will not let you get pregnant by a poor boy who dresses like a beggar. <laughs> Remember, you're a princess. The boy turned red, and I gasped in horror. It was Mama. I got up and ran out of the classroom. I barged into the broadcast room only to see Mama sitting in front of the CCTV cameras. What are you doing here? I can't trust your dumb brothers. I had to see what you were up to myself. Why won't you just leave me alone? I hate you. I'll never let you stop me. I turned and ran back to the class and asked the boy his name. W william I pulled William closer. Will you be my boyfriend? Ooh, get in a relationship just to spite your parents? I like it. Over the next year, it seemed like my parents were on a mission to embarrass me, and I was on a mission to fight back. I snuck out with William whenever I could, only to have Mama and Baba eventually find out and drag me back. They even threatened to destroy his family. But luckily for me, William wasn't scared. You're the best thing that's ever happened to me, is fear. I hate my family anyways. Eventually, when I promised not to get pregnant or run away, Mama and Baba backed off a bit. But the year I turned 17, everything changed. Both Farhad and Zach graduated high school and practically ran out of the house, leaving me alone with Mama and Baba. To distract myself, I started to participate in school projects with William. After one project we presented together, a beautiful woman approached William and I, and she asked if we'd like to do some modeling with her agency. You're the most beautiful couple I've ever seen. Come to New York with me. I rushed home to break the great news to Mama and Baba, but they looked furious. You're not going anywhere with that boy. I always knew he was trouble. No, Bubba, that's not true. In fact, we'll make huge piles of money if we both become models. At the mention of more money, Bubba looked thoughtful. But Mama jumped in and snatched the agent's card from my hand. No, we love you too much to see you going away. You're our baby and not big enough to face the world. If you push me, I'm going to have that boy expelled and you'll be getting homeschooled again. Then she ripped up the card. At that, I freaking lost it. All the years of anger bubbled up inside me. How dare you? I'm sick and tired of you two pretending to love me when you really just love Nana's money. Omar was right. You both are crazy and have done nothing but drive us all apart. Oh, that's a burn. Now to make them even more mad, you should keep burning other things like your money. Just for fun. They all got real angry. Then I rushed to my room and packed up my bag. It was time for me to move out too. I drove straight to Nana's place who looked surprised to see me. And I told her everything. You should have come sooner. From now on, you stay here with me. Just then, Mama and Baba barged in. If you're going to be such an ungrateful brat, then you should at least give back all the money we've spent on you. We even drove our sons away for you. You didn't do it for me. You did it for money. Whatever. Just pay up. 
ask your darling Nana to pay us. To my utter surprise, Nana burst out into laughter. <laughs> What money? I've never had any money. Mama and Baba looked like they'd seen a ghost. <sighs> What? B but you said I lied. I gave it all away years ago. I just wanted you to treat her better. But you idiot still didn't. Now get out of my house before I call the cops. She pushed them out and slammed the door as Mama yelled. You'll be speaking to my lawyer now. Nana, say what now? Y'all were fighting over her billions of dollars when she gave it away to charity years ago. You shouldn't have been fighting with your family. You should have been fighting with all the puppies at the dog rescue, where the money actually went. Them puppies been living in mansions for years, and you didn't even know it. And they be eating steak dinners too. Medium rare, not too cooked. Then Nana turned to me and said, "Those morons! I can't believe they are this stupid." I have the money, but I'll only spend it on your studies. And you said you're interested in modeling. I'll help you out with that too. <laughs> oh my God, Nana, you're the best! A few months later, I was permanently living with Nana. And when my 18th birthday rolled around, William and Nana said they had a surprise for me. I rushed to the door and screamed with joy. At the door stood my three brothers, smiling at me. I pulled them all into a hug as Zach whispered, "Sorry for hating on you for so long, sis." Sorry for hating on you for so long, sis. But that was before when I actually hated you. And now I'm gonna pretend to like you so I can get in on this money too. What do you got for me? One million, two million, three million in Amazon gift cards? 'Cause I'll accept all three. Well, family, what did we learn today? Ah.、Uh... Maybe that money makes people do crazy things, and to never underestimate your nana, 'cause they be some undercover savages. I ain't gonna ask how she got all that money, but maybe if I don't ask her, she won't oof me too, just like all the other people she robbed from. Uh oh, nana, that ain't legal. But plus ten for street cred. Most people eat toast or cereal for breakfast, but I'm not most people. I eat scorpions、oh. for breakfast. You see, my brother had an accident. He was helping my dad fix the roof on our house, but then he fell. He hit his head really badly, and the doctors thought he would die, but he survived. He banged his head so hard on the ground that he's now completely brain damaged. Dang, this brother's head is so messed up that he just threw in the towel and was like, "Yeah, my head's so messed up. I might as well just bang my head into everything and anything that I see. It can't get worse now, can it?" It's hard for me to say this, but I don't feel safe around him. Right after it happened and he got discharged from the hospital, our parents went out to buy some groceries. They left me home alone with him, and I was listening to music in my room. Suddenly, I felt something sharp on my ankle, and when I looked down, <gasps> my brother was biting me. He bit so hard he actually drew blood. Bro, 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 stop! That ain't no scorpion. That's not your breakfast. Oh wait, it's the girl who eats the scorpions, not the brother. Oh,、uh, I'm so confused. I screamed, but he wouldn't let go. I eventually had to swing my leg back and forth so that he'd stop. It was like he'd become a wild animal.、Mm. I told my parents about it as soon as they got home, and they shouted at me. They told me I was supposed to look after him and that it's not his fault. That it'll take time for him to go back to normal. Well, time passed and things just got worse.、Uh -oh. I eventually installed a lock on my bedroom door because I'd woken up so many times to find him wandering <gasps> into my room. Loki, I feel like this brother has something against the sister, and、uh, he wants some bad things to happen to her. I mean, look at those eyes. Do you think those eyes are the kind of sweet eyes that somebody looks at someone in a loving way?、Mm It freaked me out so much.、Mm -hmm. It was so bad that my friends stopped coming over to hang out. They said my brother was terrifying. If only they knew. I'd lie in bed at night <gasps> listening to him screaming,、oh, she's scared. And banging his fists on my wall. If I hadn't been so afraid, I'd have felt sorry for him. But then I'd look down at my ankle and、Ooh. see the scar from the bite, and I realized I had to do something to protect myself. I suggested they move him to a facility for people with brain damage, and my dad said that if I didn't shut up, he'd put me in a facility. <gasps> Fine then, I'd only look out for myself then.、Oh, if he hurt them the too, then it was their fault. One day I was babysitting him, and he kept glaring at me. His eyes were rolling around. Oh and man, looked... this kid's eyes are rolling quicker than a wheel spin on a car. Just round and round and round and round until one day they just pop out, and then you got yourself. A big problem, and I don't think you can solve that problem with a mechanic. We're talking more of a visit to the hospital and surgery kind of thing. 
Ooh. This had to end. I tried to distract myself by watching TV, and that's when a nature documentary caught my attention. It was about scorpions, Ew. specifically bark scorpions, <clears throat> the most poisonous in the whole of the U.S. Their sting can lead to numbness and vomiting for up to 72 hours. Mm. I don't know why, but after watching the show, I couldn't stop thinking about it. What would it be like to be that poisonous? Probably super dangerous, life-threatening, not pleasant, terrible, but that's just my opinion. In that moment, I almost envied those scorpions. No one could hurt them. I started researching, mm, and the next day power. I went out to try and find one. I'd never seen one in real life before, but I knew exactly where I could find them. The show said they liked citrus trees, <laughs> and right down the road, there was a citrus farm. I went there after school and asked the man who owned the farm if I could take a walk around. He seemed suspicious and asked me if I was planning on stealing his fruit. Yes, exactly, sir. That's the main reason that I'm here. I'm trying to set a world record by drinking the most amount of apple juice that anyone ever has in one minute. And my whole sneaky plan starts with you. Now cough him up. No, I just want to find some scorpions, actually. Ugh. He looked shocked. Even worse. Then he asked me to follow him. He led me to the back of a big shed and pointed towards a tank. Inside were dozens of scorpions. I couldn't believe it. I ran over and stuck my nose up against the glass. They looked so cool. Can I buy some? I asked him. Buy? <laughs> you can have them for free. <gasps> saves me killing them later. And also saves me from... You know, like... You know? These things can literally... You. So please, take them off my hands. Go ahead. This Crazy. Saves me killing them later. Poisonous, nasty things that they are, he said. That day was my lucky day. He put them into a shoebox for me and told me to be really careful because if they stung me, I could die. I walked home Duh. with the box and found an old fish tank we had. I put them all in there. But oh. as I was pouring them in... Do we see how this girl is pouring in the scorpions? She has this big box of scorpions. She's like, yeah, if they sting me, I would... And she pours them on like they're all about to fall on her chest or something. Sweetie, you gotta pour the scorpions the same way that you cut with a knife. Away from you, not towards you. I'm just trying to help. Imagine one of those things getting stuck in her shirt and then she'd be like shaking to try and get the thing out of her. And then the scorpion be holding on to her with his claws to try and hold on. And then boom, just like that. Scorpion stings you. Ooh, not fun. There, but as I was pouring them in, one of them got away. <gasps> Without even thinking, I jumped on it. Ooh, I heard the crunch sound and I shivered. Ugh. And then I had another thought. I'd read that you could eat them. My parents weren't home yet, and my brother was at our grandma's. <gasps> so I went downstairs oh. and poured some oil into a pan. Then I fried the scorpion and cut off its stinger. Oh. I couldn't believe it. I was actually about to eat a scorpion. I even filmed myself. I could be famous, I thought. It tasted <gasps> like popcorn. I swallowed it in a few bites and waited to see if anything happened, but I felt fine. I decided to upload the video to my Instagram. I only had like 50 followers, but still. I only had like 50 followers, but uh, I could go viral from this. So I'm gonna do it. Oh, no, 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 no. Not the way to do it, guys. Not the way to do it. You don't have to be eating scorpions to be famous. Heck, you don't have to eat any kind of bugs. Especially not the poisonous kind. And later that night, I decided to try something. I crept into my brother's room when he was already fast asleep. Uh -oh. His toes were sticking out of the end of his bed. I bit down on his big toe and waited. It was just a little bite. I wanted to see if I was poisonous now. But instead, something worse happened. He kicked me in the face. My nose started bleeding. He didn't even know he'd done it. He was still asleep. So much for being poisonous. I just need to eat more and try again. Whoa, 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 whoa. If I'm getting this correctly, she wanted to test it on her brother to see if she was poisonous yet? Was she trying to... Her brother? Oh, man, this story just keeps getting more twisted and twisted and... Ugh. Next morning, I woke up and I was actually craving scorpions. Ew. We had phys ed that day and the show had said they were a good protein source. 
This time I chose a smaller one. I was so scared my mom would walk in, so I did it as quickly as possible. But then I heard someone on the stairs. It was my brother. <gasps> oh no. I quickly turned the gas off and threw the <gasps> scorpion in my mouth. It was still moving, <gasps> and I was about to spit it out, but it was too late. <gasps> it was crawling down my throat. Oh, I felt like oh I was going to choke. Oh my god, I oh my grabbed god. a glass of water and washed it down. Well, it was inside me now. There was nothing I could do about it. My brother spat his tongue out at me, and suddenly I grabbed him and told him to never do that again. <gasps> I'd never done that before, and it shocked me. I didn't know I was even capable of speaking to him like that. And then I bit him again. <gasps> this time he was awake, and he felt it. His face started to go red, and I was sure I poisoned him. And you were happy about it? Why she got some creepy smirk on her face right now? Like, yeah. And it was at that moment, guys, that I realized that I poisoned him. Sis, you got some issues. But instead, he started screaming and ran to wake up mom and dad. <laughs> well, at least he'd run away and not bitten me back. Maybe it was working after all. But oh my gosh, <gasps> I hadn't cut the stinger off. I'd mm -hmm. eaten a scorpion that was semi-raw and that still had its stinger on it. Now I was probably going to be vomiting. Suddenly, I had this weird feeling wash over me. It wasn't sickness, though. It was power. Like, I was the one in control now, uh -oh. not my brother. Maybe this was how I could protect myself. So that's why I started eating scorpions for breakfast every morning. It was too risky to cook them <sighs> in the kitchen, so I decided to just eat them raw. I mean, I'd had no bad side effects, although I always cut the stinger off. I'm not that stupid. I hate to break it to you, but you are that stupid. Did you forget just a couple days ago you did eat the stinger? You ate the whole freaking scorpion! Raw! Not a smart thing to do! Mm-mm-mm-mm! I ate a particularly big scorpion one morning, and then at school that day, I heard two girls whispering about my brother when I walked by. Even though my brother annoyed me, <laughs> it wasn't his fault. So I decided to get them back for this. The next day, I watched as they opened their lockers at exactly the same time. I'll never forget their screams. <gasps> they echoed through the corridor, and one of the scorpions actually looked like it was chasing them. <gasps> they laughed so hard, although it meant I'd wasted two of them. Oh well, plenty more where they came from. Can we all just take a second and think about that scorpion just walking down those hallways of the school? Just chilling. Buddy probably thinks he got a scholarship or something and it's his time to shine. But little did he know that he's actually just all a part of one big prank. And soon enough, his time is uh, gonna be cut to an end. Or should I say swallowed to an end? Ugh. It was crazy that I felt fine eating them. I actually enjoyed them. Some people were apparently allergic to their venom, so I was relieved I wasn't one of them. My favorite thing was to dip them in peanut butter. Their claws got all stuck together, and that way they wouldn't pinch my tongue. That night, when I got home, I found my brother in my room. I'd been so excited about taking the scorpions to school, I'd forgotten to put the lock back on my door. I caught him just as he was about to open my scorpion tank. I ran over and pulled him onto the ground. You ran over and pulled him onto the ground? Uh, sis, I just saw you give him a little one-two backhanded punch and buddy got KO'd. Is that just me? But it was too late. One of the scorpions was about to escape. <gasps> Before my brother could touch it, I grabbed it. And then I felt it. <gasps> it was worse than any pain I'd ever felt in my life. It started in the palm of my oh, hand no, and no, then it no. shot through oh, my no. whole body. It had stung me. Maybe I was allergic after all. Oh no, I was going to die and my brother didn't even know how to call an ambulance. Oh no! I started screaming at him and he just laughed. And then just before I passed out, I saw him walking towards the tank. But he just laughed when he saw his sister get bitten by that scorpion? I feel like both his brother and sister just hate each other and uh, they both want each other. God! I woke up in the hospital, alone. My parents weren't even there. And then I looked over to my left, and there was my brother. But he was also lying in a hospital bed, and his eyes were closed. <gasps> my parents suddenly came in and saw me waking up and started crying. And then they started shouting. They asked why I had scorpions in my room. And then they told me that my brother had been stung by one too, and he was still unconscious. This was a disaster. Oh my gosh. All I'd wanted was to feel poisonous, and I'd ended up poisoning myself and my brother. You tried to poison him days ago, though. This is what I don't understand. Why are you trying to act all sad about it now? Girl, you lying. If he didn't survive, I'd never live with myself. I was feeling okay, so I decided to take a walk and get some fresh air. 
I saw some familiar faces walking towards me, and then I realized who they were. It was the two girls from school that I'd pranked and their parents. Oh. They asked where my parents were. Then they went crazy. The one girl's dad started shouting at them, saying they were the most irresponsible parents on the planet mm. and that I could have killed their daughter. They mm. didn't understand how they'd known it was me who'd done it. And then I remembered the video I'd uploaded. Oh. I watched it? My parents just sat there speechless, gripping onto my brother's hands. Then one of the girls said, See, her brother is a total freak. I bet he ate a scorpion too, and that's why he's here. My mom stood up, and I thought she was going to grab the girl and shake her. But then she turned to me and said, You ate a what? Then the girls showed my mom the video, and my mom looked horrified. She started crying and wouldn't even look at me. After my parents apologized on my behalf and the girls and their parents left, I could hear my mom whispering to my dad, She's even more crazy than our son is. How did this happen? Call the doctor. I didn't even have time to grab my stuff and run out of there before a whole group of doctors cornered me and tied me to the bed. <gasps> then they wheeled me off to another part of the hospital. I was screaming the whole way there. Suddenly, I was in a room with no windows, and even the walls were padded. Did they think I was insane? I couldn't believe mm -hmm. it. How ironic. It was my brother who was insane, and I'd done this to protect myself, but now they thought it was me who was a lunatic. My video went viral. Everyone was so freaked mm. out by how excited I looked as I bit into that first scorpion I ever tasted. My brother eventually woke up, and he was okay, thankfully. My parents took him home, but they left me at the hospital. I spent a whole month in the psychiatric ward before they released me. Looks like my dad kept his word. He really did put me in a facility. At school now, it's not my brother people whisper about. It's me, and it's all my fault. I can't explain it, but I actually miss the taste of the scorpions. But I don't think I'm ready to eat another one anytime soon. Maybe next year. Dang! Oh my god, what a crazy story! Guys, a couple life lessons from this story. One, don't put anything on social media that you don't want people to see because uh, that stuff stays forever. Two, don't be judging someone so quickly because chances are you got some flaws of your own too. And I'm talking to you, scorpion eater. And life lesson three, the most important of all, is that I guess scorpions taste good? Uh, I don't know, but don't eat them, guys. No, seriously, like, don't eat them. Anyways, guys, that's all the video that I have for you today. If you like today's video, don't forget to smash that like button as hard as you freaking can. Also, hit that subscribe button so you can join the family. I love you guys so much. And I'll see you all in the next video.